Is this the best driver of 2023? Or is this the best driver of 2023? Well, they're certainly going to be both contenders for that title, but I'm going to put these in a good old fashioned face off. Some on course testing head to head here at La Hacienda in San Roque, southern Spain. But also, I gathered some dry ball data in the cold and wet, miserable UK before I came out here. So, we're going to have some. Uh, well, proper old opinion based on data, but maybe more importantly, some real-time performance. So maybe you want to know if the Ping G430 is in fact the more forgiving out of these two drivers, or in fact, is the Stealth 2 going to be the longest driver in this face-off? Right, first one away. A little bit lower ball flight, maybe guided a little bit down that left hand side. The idea for me is to try and hit that bit of a cutty ball in between the two bunkers. It's cut, it's in the middle of the fairway. Not a bad start for the G430. Let's have a quick switch into the stealth. Well, that's a much better ball flight from the stealth, and to be fair, a better swing on my part ball flight higher the interesting thing is they finished almost identical in terms of on the fairway slightly longer the stealth ball we'll have a close look when we get down to the fairway but in all honesty the only thing that separated those two shots was the quality of my swing right let's move on it's a couple more and we'll get really into my thoughts on these two drivers right so what are we pitching up against one another well first of all i've got the g430 max head and it's in 10 and a half degrees and then i've got the stealth 2 standard not adjustable in a nine degree but before anyone gets too excited we've notched one up one down so we're there or thereabouts in terms of the same loft and then of course we cannot upset the shaft please and just briefly talk about what's in both so in the ping i have that cb alta 55 gram reg shaft let's see how this one goes Well, the first thing to notice, and I think you're going to see a lot of it, is just how high that ball flight is with the ping club. Every one of these G430 lineups seems to have a huge concentration on assisting you in terms of launching the ball. And it is no difference with the driver. And you'll see that ball flight is really, really high. I've got a feeling that might be one of the key separators between these two. So switch up to stealth. Let's have a quick look at what shaft's in that. So for those of you who watch the channel, you know I've been using this shaft for quite some time. It's the Pro Force V2. It is in fact a high launch, the 5F3. It's a from memory 55 reg. It's a reg shaft, but I can't remember the weight. If it's different, I'll put that up on screen now. But it's something that I've really enjoyed using and found incredibly stable. Well, again, it's that kind of stock shot of mine, which is down that left-hand side, usually with a bit more cut. There tends to be a fairly flat and more penetrating ball flight. Now, whether or not that is the head or whether or not that is down to the shaft, I'm not quite sure. But you'll already see a considerable difference in the ball flight from these two drivers. Right, now, it's really interesting. Those first two balls we hit, not a great deal to split them, although stealth was slightly longer. This is a different story altogether and really sort of uh, amplifies, if you like, the difference between ball flights and on course performance. The ping ball is smack bang in the middle of the fairway. It was a very controlled tee shot and it launched incredibly high, like I said. And we found the middle of the fairway. Could you ask for more? Well, the argument you've got to put up against this one really is that the stealth ball is quite literally maybe 50 yards longer on this occasion and that's down to the ball flight the fact that we're playing into the breeze whereas the high ball flight just held a little bit and the lower spinning stealth model obviously kicked on on these firm fairways so a huge difference in terms of where these two balls have finished but you've still got to ask yourself the question which one you prefer to play the one from the middle of the fairway or the one that just about stayed in play now one final thing to mention is that the uh, stealth shaft is one inch shorter, perhaps even an inch and a half shorter than uh, that of the ping. So another thing worth bearing in mind. I mean, the point is, this review is hardly scientific. 
the arguments wouldn't stand up in a court of law and you could argue it's all meaningless it's very much the opinion of one average golfer on two very good drivers right so the line was at the bunker and my little bit of cut and then see what the ball does in terms of kicking on interesting again ball flight is uh, sort of i would call it very much a sort of mid quite a penetrating ball fight to be honest with you, that comes off this and then again as it lands you won't pick it up on camera but you can see it just kicks on and definitely insinuates this is a low spin model and we'll talk about that data that i collected earlier very very shortly but again can't really ask any more from what the stealth has done so far in terms of my sort of swing capabilities versus performance on course it's done everything i could ask of it to be honest with you same t different club let's get the g430 in hand right so what you're about to see is a real solid strike with that g430 it's not floaty like the one we've seen before and spinning this one has got a much stronger ball flight and clearly a much better swing again really happy with the two drives i've put together it didn't cut which was the interesting bit and again that's something that i've noticed with the g430 it's almost straight straight that's a you know and don't get me wrong that's not an issue as such um but i didn't get the cut I feel like visually it looks as though it's gone into the bunker whereas the stealth snuck around so it's going to be hard to measure in terms of distance I don't think there was a great deal to split them in terms of uh, their launch and land angle and where they carry to to be quite honest with you um, interesting bit for me is just how much better the G430 driver sounds compared to its predecessors chalk and cheese and one of the biggest highlights for me in looking at 2023 product was the uh, the softer sounds of the G430 lineup now of course we couldn't do any head-to-head -head without a discussion on looks and uh, they're very much subjective obviously I think the big split on this one is what you like at a dress because the crowns are completely different one and the major fact being one is gloss one is matte and I think that's a clear divider I think the kind of like raised elements on ping the turbulators as such can put people off and they prefer that sort of flatter crown the overall then shape in terms of the driver heads again are quite different so there's a lot to say separate them visually um, and I think like I said it's a key part of the decision making process and also in, at least if you're from the UK it depends whether you support Everton or Liverpool because if you support Everton I don't think you go anywhere near the stealth right interesting ball with the ping we are and again interesting enough we are right into the teeth of the wind so this should be interesting ball has risen a little looks like it could be a little bit spinny and hovered a, a, a touch so therefore maybe that ball fight just is that little bit too high and that's emphasized into this wind it's going to be really interesting because it's the last drive of the day i'm going to switch into the uh, stealth and this is where there could be a big performance difference the ball fight was actually quite high but looking at it visually it's well it's powered past where the g425 is i'll go and film down on the uh, course and see how much difference there actually is but the ball the difference being the noticeable difference is spin in my opinion because that ball carries on going it doesn't hover even though like i said it launched quite high there looks to be a considerable difference between where these two are finished and there's a considerable difference between the way these two perform and i'll give you my overall conclusion right as the sun goes down here at la hacienda then uh, we'll draw this whole thing to a conclusion and i think that it's going to be one that it's been really interesting to be honest to see um we haven't done the data have we let's get the data up because all throughout this i already knew what these things did in terms of dry ball data and what they did is the same as what we've seen out in the course in that the ping launched the ball higher the spin number was a little bit higher although not greatly different the overall carry was that little bit better with the stealth and i think it's just that combination of launch really low and consistent spin number on stealth produces that overall carry distance over i think it was 10 shots on each that's what it did in dry ball data and then when you get it out on the course it was interesting because the sort of it seemed higher spinning with the wind involved and that was detrimental to the ping's performance it lifted the ball and launched it a bit higher which had a detrimental effect on that carry distance and particularly on that last and i think was it the second drive of the day they were really affected by the wind so i think and again the obvious thing would be you'd say okay well stealth is the winner for me personally today I think the winner for me is the shaft i've said that all along for the last year or so since i've tried that pro force v2 shaft although it's reg 
it's uh, on the stiff side and the kick point is a bit different and I think just overall it suits my style. The interesting bit again, inch and a half even shorter just shows that length of shaft is not key as well. It's about finding the centre and having that control, that's been a big change for me. But I certainly wouldn't dismiss either driver, you know, because I like and I'm more interested in finding fairways and forgiveness is a key factor for me. And I've played with the G425 both here, filmed some videos at home, I've hardly missed a fairway with it and I feel ultra confident with it. So it's a real weird one. It's just about really the personal preferences that you have, what you need. If you need a bit of help and assistance with launch, the G430, I think I might have called it 425, the G430 is a huge, huge help in that department. Um, I do think it's ultra forgiving as well. Ball speeds are good, just an overall good performer. But for me, the key is getting a head and shaft combination that works because that's the key element. And what I hope to do is try and get that Pro Force shaft in and available for a Callaway head and also for uh, the likes of the Ping heads. And then we can get a better barometer in terms of the performance of the heads rather than perhaps the performance of the shafts. I hope that all made sense. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I did testing out here on the course. Like I said, La Hacienda Lynx here in San Rock is absolutely stunning. You've seen some great backdrops and hopefully plenty of other videos from here over this last few days and probably one again tomorrow night. So I'm going to get something to eat and maybe a beer or two and I'll see you tomorrow.